Okay, welcome back to the second half of, uh, of the Sugar Seminar with uh, Professor Weber continuing his talk. Please go ahead. Thank you. So we have our object that we uh, study, the square zero matrices. Uh, and they in B orbits in the square zero matrices. And uh, we have in mind that uh, studying that, we also study uh, just matrix uh, Schubert varieties, uh, or, or you can say B times B orbits in the matrices, rectangular matrices. And um, several invariants can be computed. Of course, one can compute a fundamental class. A fundamental class in the vector space, it's not uh, maybe uh, uh, interesting thing, but uh, of course you, you all know that then you take equivariant cohomology. So you look at the fundamental classes in equivariant cohomology and this have several, several names like multi-degrees or, or Tom, uh, on polynomial, so there are many. But just uh, let's stick to the multi degrees. And I have to say that uh, I really working on, on that uh, with my students. I, in fact, I didn't know that fundamental classes were already computed by uh, first different Chesko and Zin Justin, and then paper by Knudson and Zin Justin. Uh, it appeared uh, in, somewhere hidden in there, but uh, one, one can point exactly the references and they also use the Melnikov results. So fundamental classes, uh, you should look to them, uh, to basically to Zin Justin with several authors, with these two authors. So I just concentrate on the change part McPherson classes or motivic chain classes. And uh, this is new, that is not finished, elliptic classes of Borisov Lipkova. So, Chern Schwarz McPherson classes, I rather use the Alufi approach that uh, how to do it, how to compute it. So, we, we, co we are computing of the Chern Schwarz McPherson classes of orbits. So, orbits are itself are smooth, but the closure is singular. So, uh, one has to resolve the singularities of the boundary. That means you, we, we look for the resolution of the closure such that the boundary uh, after uh, resolving becomes a normal crossing divisor and then there are formulas to compute it. I will just, uh, next slide, the formulas will be presented. And the same thing is for the motivic chain classes. Motivic chain classes were, um, defined by Brasseler, Schurman, and Yokura. So it's uh, K-theoretic, uh, uh, K-theoretic, uh, not a version, but uh, origin, K-theoretic origin of Hirscher group class, so something that lives in K-theory. And in the equivariant version, it was uh, studied uh, by Alufi, Michalcia, Schurman, and Su, and also uh, me with uh, Richard Trimani and uh, La Laszlo Feher, we, we also were interested, but this is basically straightforward extension of the, of the first definition. These classes are so tautological that uh, making it equivariant, making the equivariant version, there are some technicalities, but and finally, there are um, elliptic classes. The elliptic classes were defined uh, in uh, cohomology by Borisov and Zip Gober in a non-equivariant uh, uh, setup. Uh, so we, this was in cohomology. Uh, with Richard, uh, we have defined it in K-theory, but they really live in the elliptic theory. In the elliptic cohomology. The problem is that uh, equivariant elliptic uh, cohomology have several versions and we are not sure which version one has to choose. So, but this is irrelevant because we uh, work um, equivariantly with assumption that fixed points are isolated. So using localization, everything lives over the fixed points. So, the version of equivariant uh, elliptic theory is uh, really 
not important here. This is the, the theory is about combinatorics of formulas, not about cohomology theory. And all these um, theories have a common uh, common uh, feature that you can compute all these using a resolution of singularities with, uh, with this uh, assumption that the boundary has simple normal crossing. So uh, Chern-Schwarz McPherson classes were de defined by some factorial properties. Motivic Chern classes can be defined by using uh, mixed Hodge modules, but uh, in fact, this uh, uh, procedure of resolving is the fastest one. Um, then the definition is easy and to prove that uh, things does not depend on the resolution is application of weak, uh, weak factorization theorem. And also the borisov lipgober uh, classes are defined in that way. In fact, in the original paper of borisov lipgober they Exactly, they used weak factorization to, to show that uh, the definition does not depend on the resolution. And in our situation, everything is um, easy because um, the resolution, uh, the, the singularities that we study admit resolutions such that uh, the uh, fixed points of the torus acting Okay, the whole Borel group is acting, but if we compute the cohomological invariants, the torus really matters. And the fixed points of the torus are isolated on the resolution, in the resolution. So to compute the invariant, for example, call it this invariant C of some orbit. Uh, okay, it lives in the uh, GLN in the, or in the just, or in the upper triangular matrices. Anyway, it's a vector space and the restriction to zero is isomorphism. Uh, and using localization theorem, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, compute these classes just by summing up contribution that come from the fixed point of the resolution. So this is the formula. If you have a formula for the class uh, or in the resolution here, so you compute the um, contribution of each fixed point and dividing by the Euler class of that fixed point, Euler class of the tangent uh, uh, representation, you just sum up this contribution and you get the, this unknown class for the singular uh, variety. So this is really easy. This is combinatorics of the fixed point plus information what you information about weights of action at the tangent directions. Okay. So the local um, local computation. So local computation. What what data is necessary to compute the local class upstairs on the resolution? In the resolution. So for simplicity, assume that this uh, locally look, looks like a piece of uh, CN. In fact, in our case, this is exactly uh, this this space has a covering by affine spaces. And so let's assume that our normal crossing divisor is given by just uh, you admit uh, uh, equation only of the type some some variables not equal to zero. So it's of dimension n and suppose the first k, uh, k variables uh, are, are different from zero and take a standard torus, then you can specialize to, to some subtorus. So to compute CSM class for the situation, this is the formula. For the this coordinates that you uh, assume that this is non-zero, you have to take one over weight. Ti is the weight of the uh, i's coordinate. And for the other other directions uh, here, so in the denominator is the Euler class, and in the numerator is the Chern class. So if you subtract from here the 
he will use additivity of the CSM classes. If you does subt, if you okay, so this is the uh, calculus. Yes. So this is the churn class, and we uh, subtract uh, the uh, uh, direct image of the the image of the uh, locus uh, that this variable x uh, x z i equals zero. So if you subtract it, you you get this one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so this is the formula, and the similar formula is for the motivic trend classes, except that it's in the K theory. So in the so K theory of the point is the representation ring, and you have extra variable y so for the uh, things that are uh, without um, demanding that i uh, coordinates is uh, non-zero you have this this uh, um, kind of uh, contribution and for the other uh, you can you can see that if you subtract it from the from that Euler class you get the other other factor so these are two kinds of factors that appear and for the elliptic uh, class the situation is a little bit more uh, delicate because in the definition of Boris of Lipkober uh, also matters the uh, Jacobian ideal uh, the, these classes are defined with respect uh, to a boundary that is a divisor. It has to be Q divisor satisfying some properties. And these classes def depend on this boundary divisor. If I write this divisor in that uh, shape, that is one minus AI, AI is some small rational. You can think about it AI as a small rational number. So it's like a you want to subtract uh, this divisor, but the theory does not allow you to subtract this, this divisor. So you subtract one minus something. You can think it's epsilon. And then uh, this is the formula of the same shape. You have one contribution of this part uh, with restriction, non-zero restriction, and the other part here. And in this theory, uh, the theta function, Jacobi theta function is used instead of uh, as an Euler class and some normalization. So you have um, Ti is a variable and this theta function is written in the multiplicative, uh, multiplicative um, convention. Uh, and it, it, there is extra variable H. So this is extra variable H and the variables of tor torus are Ti. So you have this kind of, contribu uh, con uh, this kind of uh, contribution of the smooth point, smooth direction and the direction um, associated to the divisor, you have to take um, power of this H, uh, this power depending on the coefficient of the divisor. And you can uh, think what would happen if you take AI equals zero, if you take AI equals zero, like divisor with coefficient one, then you get pole. So these classes are not defined for the, uh, for the mm, divisor with coefficient one, but uh, you can approach it. So in fact, uh, this, uh, these classes, you can think of them about as a function on the divisors. And this is the most convenient way of, of looking at them. So, okay, so we know the local contributions and now uh, we want to have a recursion for the, uh, for the, um, for these classes, in, in our context. So we suppose this is uh, um, GLN the, or, or, or just this uh, upper triangular matrices. Here you have zero and suppose you have orbit. So somewhere here is this distinguished uh, representative W 
And then you have uh, SIW uh, and it makes uh, this orbit uh, bigger, one dimension bigger. Okay. And there is a relation between resolution. So suppose uh, W is uh, pi times minimal orbit and take a reduced word representing this uh, permutation, you get both Samuelson resolution. And the relation uh, between these uh, is that the further resolution is a, a twisted product uh, over P1. Uh, so you have fiber X pi. So this is depending on the uh, reduced word. Uh, and uh, okay. So I want to take this and um, this projects to um, PI over B, which is projective line. And there are two fibers over identity. You have uh, you have X pi and over uh, permutation SI, you have also X pi. The five, this is a fiber bundle. So the um, fibers are identical. Maybe I just raise. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, in pi, uh, in P P1, yes, two points. Fibers are identical, but this is twisted, twisted uh, torus action. Okay. And we want to compute the characteristic class. So the characteristic class depends, there is a vertical uh, direction and there is horizontal direction. And also here, vertical direction and horizontal direction. And uh, okay, there are some fixed points and we have to sum up over these fixed points. So you have to take, uh, let's look at this, um, this part. So you have twisted action. So you have, uh, I call it, um, internal internal factor because it's not lying in the boundary of, the, of this divisor downstairs uh, so you have um, you have to change the action so that means uh, switch the variables and also compute the internal factor coming from the uh, from the p1 here but subtract the, uh, this vertical fiber that you have to subtract. And then, um, oh, no, I'm sorry. In, in this one, you don't, do not subtract. And in that one, you, uh, the other, other, uh, other part, this one is, you do not twist uh, the action, but you have to subtract um, the divisor. So maybe I would move to the concrete uh, theories, the um, K theory and uh, uh, cohomology, that means uh, motivic chain classes and chern Schwarz McPherson classes. For the chern classes, uh, you get the following that you can write it in this way that the more complicated uh, the more complicated uh, class is obtained from the easier class by application of the operator and this operator is that take uh, initial function uh, divide it so this is uh, Euler class of the of the tangent bundle of p1 and this the other one is the uh, uh, the twisted uh, twisted action that that's why you have switch uh, variables and multiply by the chunk class of the normal normal direction okay and uh, alternatively 
you can write it in that way. So it's like left, like in the paper of, uh, recent paper of, uh, of, of, of Naru, in, I should tell, say it in the right direction, right or the uh, Leonardo, Michalcia, uh, Hiroshi Naruze and Chan Jan Su studied the, just the left, uh, left um, the Mazur operators for, for the Grassmannian. So we have this kind of operator, but, but acting on the level of the, uh, uh, of the, the square zero matrices and they act in the same way. Okay, and exactly the same can be repeated for the motivic train classes. You have uh, here the. You have here the factor corresponding to the internal points, and the uh, factor corresponding to the boundary points. Internal points uh, you have to switch the action of the torus, and for the boundary points, uh, you leave the action, and it's almost the isobaric uh, divided difference, except that the, there is opposite order of variables. But this is, this is that one and subtract F. That means subtract the, the fiber, the fiber, the boundary fiber. Okay, so this is example. Maybe I skip this example. If we use just variables T, TIs of the torus conjugating, then we have to stay within this uh, um, upper triangular because otherwise you would have uh, non-isolated fixed point in the, uh, the diagonal matrices are not uh, are fixed. But if you move to the uh, extra variable that's acting just by scalar multiplication, if you add another variable, then you can consider these classes in the GLM, the whole algebra. And I should say that you can go beyond the, um, beyond the uh, upper triangular matrices because this uh, procedure of resolving uh, orbits or resolving of B orbits does not require upper triangularity, like in the uh, Bender Perron paper. Okay, uh, maybe time is uh, growing, so maybe I can say from these formulas one can uh, deduce the um, uh, formulas for the Chen Schwarz McPherson classes and motivic Chen classes of the Schubert uh, Schubert varieties in the flag variety because just taking quotient. You have to uh, just divide these classes by the uh, tangent direction to the orbit. If you if you we divide by the uh, Borel group, then we have to divide by this uh, direction. And also, there is another feature that maybe I should spend one or two minutes on that. That. Um, in fact, I got interested in this subject uh, when Richard Rimani presented me the uh, Rimani Tarasov Varchenko, previously Tarasov Varchenko weight function. And uh, for, for, for a long time, this weight function was just something like Varchenko presented it, something that they cooked up trying to, uh, to make weights of the certain function. Uh, living in the right space, and there was no geometric uh, geometric interpretation of this weight space, like uh, Schubert polynomial, double Schubert polynomial. For some time, it was not known what 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 geometric geometrically, what the meaning geometrically of, of that. And you can interpret, I mean, the outcome of of, of uh, our work with uh, with Piotr Rudnitsky is that this weight. Uh, Rimani weight function can be interpreted as a just uh, motivic chain class of the this upper triangular matrices, but living uh, in this 
in this uh, block. So for, for example, if we take n equal to, so we take block n times n minus one. So this is this block. Uh, this is a simple observation that to have a permutation, you have to just say what are the images of n first n minus one elements. The last one is determined. So it's enough to take this space instead, uh, this smaller home. And in that way, you get this uh, weight function. This weight function exactly corresponds to the uh, to the characteristic classes of, of orbits living in, in living in that block. And finally, the elliptic classes are not too, too much time and uh, I have not much to say that uh, you have to be careful. This elliptic classes depend on divisor. And if you move to the more complicated uh, uh, situation, you have to change a divisor and here set some different uh, um, coefficient and that's the problem. And in fact, there are many cases when you simplify situation, you have several moves that can simplify uh, just uh, exchanging these uh, right legs or the left legs or just uh, exchanging light with uh, left with right. And also there are five cases. And for each of these cases, one can find the formula that uh, describes the elliptic classes, except that uh, there is some choice of generators. And uh, with some, some choice, it can be less messy than than one would expect. Maybe I should say that you just associate a divisor to every arc. And with this association, uh, you see, for example, here, this is the first arrow, this is the second arrow. And then with this move, these divisors are exchanged. While here, if you exchange the end, uh, end points of the arrows, the divisors are not exchanged. So that's why you have to take it into account. Okay, so maybe I, I stop here, not uh, showing the further formulas. All right. Well, thank you very much for a beautiful talk.